This is a Let's Read and Find Out science book. What will the weather be? It was written by Linda DeWitt. The illustrations were done by Carolyn Kroll. If you already know that you want to grow up and become a meteorologist, or if you're just curious about how people predict the weather, the people at, Har the people at HarperCollins Publishers thought this might be a good book for you. The sky was gray and cloudy over Washington, D.C. on the morning of January 22nd, 1987. The weather forecast called for an inch or two of snow. But by noon, there was so much snow on the ground that many cars and buses were stuck in it. The airports had to close down. So did the schools. In all, 14 inches of snow fell in the city. The weather forecast was wrong, and people were not prepared for the huge storm. Weather forecasts tell us what kind of weather is coming. But predicting the weather is hard to do. It is easy to see what the weather is like right now. You, you can go outside and look. Is the air warm or cold? Is it windy or still? Is the sky clear or is it covered with dark clouds? Whatever the weather is like, it often stays that way for days at a time. But then something happens. The wind begins to blow. Air from somewhere else moves in. Sometimes it is cooler air from the north. Sometimes it is warmer air from the south. The new air pushes against the old air. The place where this happens is called a front. Most changes in the weather occur along fronts. Here is the new air pushing against the front and pushing the old air out. Where cold air pushes against warm air, we say there is a cold front. Here's the cold air pushing against warm air, and it sets up a cold front. Cold fronts move fast. They can make the wind howl. They quickly push warm air up and out of the way. Here's the warm air being pushed up and out of the way. Warm air carrying water vapor. The rising air carries water. The water is not a liquid. It's a gas called water vapor. As the air rises, it cools and the water vapor turns to liquid. High in the sky, the drops of liquid water clump together and make clouds. The clouds grow big and dark as more air rises. Then it rains. There may be thunder and lightning. If it is cold enough, snow falls. It all happens very fast. Cold fronts cause sudden storms, but they usually do not last long. After a cold front passes, the sky clears and the weather is colder. When warm air pushes against cold air, a warm front forms. This is a warm front, different than a cold front. When warm air pushes against cold air, a warm front forms. Warm fronts move slowly. They make the wind blow just a little. Wispy clouds cover the sky. There may be a light shower, or it may drizzle for a couple of days. Warm fronts change the weather slowly. After a warm front passes, the sky clears and the weather is warmer. Meteorologists, like this man and this woman, are people who study the weather and they try to predict where fronts will form. They measure the temperature of the air at different places around the Earth. They find out where the warm air is and where the cold air is. This meteorologist is saying to tell us that a thermometer measures temperature. This, of course, is a thermometer. A wind vane tells from what direction the wind blows. An anemometer 
measures wind speed. They watch to see where the air moves. They measure how fast it goes, these meteorologists. Meteorologists also measure the amount of water vapor or humidity in the air. Water vapor like this. A hygrometer measures humidity. Water vapor is what makes air feel damp or humid. Lots of water vapor rises from the ocean or from the Great Lakes. That is why air along coastlines feels humid. Another thing meteorologists measure is air pressure. It's hard to imagine, but air has weight, and all of this weight presses on the earth. It presses on everything, even you. Hundreds of pounds of air press against your body all the time. You cannot feel it because air inside your body pushes out with the same force. Air inside this basketball pushes out too. You can bounce a ball when it has air in it, but what happens when you take the air out? The basketball flattens, it collapses from the weight of outside air. You cannot feel air pressure and you cannot tell when it changes, but it does. Sometimes it is high and sometimes it is low. As the air pressure changes, the weather changes. And this meteorologist is saying a barometer, that's this thing, a barometer measures air pressure. When air pressure is low, air is rising into the sky. Water vapor in the air turns to liquid and clouds form. As more air rises, the pressure gets lower and lower, and the clouds get bigger and darker. Lots of rain or snow may fall when the air pressure is low. Luckily, the air pressure is high most of the time. When air pressure is high, air is sinking toward Earth. The skies stay mostly clear. A few puffy clouds may appear, but it won't rain. The weather is dry and sunny when the air pressure is high. So when the meteorologist says the barometer is falling, that means it's not going to stay so beautiful. Meteorologists measure the air pressure over the whole Earth. They find the highs and the lows. They measure the temperature and humidity of the air. They see where air is warm or cold, damp and dry. They measure the speed and direction of the wind. They take the measurements over the oceans and over the land. Here are some of the instruments they use. This is a weather buoy. It floats on the water out in the ocean. This boat has equipment like a weather balloon being launched and ways to measure the wind speed. This is a weather airplane. This is a weather satellite. We rely on many of these. This is another weather balloon being launched. And this is a weather station where the men and women who are meteorologists study the data. Throughout the day, the measurements are sent to the National Weather Service in Maryland. There, huge computers plot the measurements on maps. The maps show the temperature, humidity, and pressure of the air all around the world. Arrows on the maps mark the direction of the winds. Cold fronts and warm fronts show where storms are forming. Meteorologists everywhere study the maps. To forecast weather for tomorrow and the next day, they need to know what is happening hundreds and hundreds of miles away. They need to know what kind of air is coming. They can make forecasts from what they see on their maps. This is a weather map, and the person who's working as meteorologist in your area might say, hmm... A low front's moving toward the Great Lakes. Temperatures are going to be dropping. And if you live in the Great Lakes, then you have a clue. And then the person might say, but a, but a warm front's coming right behind that low front. The weather will change. Weather forecasts are sent to radio and television stations. They are printed in the newspapers. They're posted online. 
The forecasts tell us what kind of air is coming and what kind of weather to expect. They may call for warm and sunny days, or they may tell us to prepare for snow and strong winds. They warn farmers when a frost is coming. They help us decide whether our schools and airports should be closed down. Changes in the weather are not always predictable, so not all of the forecasts are right. Sometimes meteorologists tell us to take our umbrellas when we don't need them. Other times they say we won't need a jacket when we do. But meteorologists today know a lot more about the weather than ever before. And usually we can depend on their forecasts when we're wondering, what will the weather be? The end. Professor Roman Gans, Roma Gans from Teachers College Columbia University thought this would be a good topic for a Let's Read and Find Out science book. And if you enjoyed it, there's so many more books like this where you can learn about digging up dinosaurs, where you can learn about what happens when the snow is falling, when you can learn about meeting a computer. Science is a wonderful way to learn about the world around you, and these books will help you get ready to actually do science. This Let's Read and Find Out science book has been What Will the Weather Be? Written by Linda DeWitt, illustrated by Carolyn Kroll.